Hi, welcome to the L Rush Show, where I deliver content intended to inspire, educate, and motivate. Engage with me online at lrush.com and on social media. Enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Today, my guest is Jocelyn Kelly Reed. She is a leading intuitive business and abundance coach. She's a money queen on a mission to lead spiritual women to make a big impact to get rich, work less, play more and fall in love with life. But this episode is for everyone who wants to get into positive energy about money and manifesting and intentionally creating more in one's life. Hope you enjoy. So glad to have you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Al. I'm so happy to be here. This is a topic everyone wants to know and learn and everyone loves money. Everyone, everyone wants more money. of it. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people got a lot of interesting views about money that it's holding them back. Um, you know, let's start with, you know, look, you self-identify as a money queen. You are here to really get people in the energy of attracting more money and understanding and embracing that. So where did you start? What was your initial money story? Where do you come from? <laughs> where do I come from? You're like, who are you? <laughs> so it's really interesting because I actually grew up financially well off. So most people think that if that happens, right, that you're automatically set up for success and you're not going to have money dramas inside your life. And that was absolutely not my story. And what people don't remember is that we are impacted by our family's trauma as well, not just what we experienced in our, with our immediate family, but our lineage and, you know, past lives, but that's a whole other topic. And so inside of my family's experience before, you know, my father had his rags to riches story, there was a lot of chaos, a lot of poverty, a lot of addiction, and just kind of, you know, all those issues that kind of tend to circulate together when we're looking at, you know, very low levels of money and a lot of stress and chaos in that area. And so I really feel like, especially because I'm kind of that person in the family, and this could apply to all of us who do a lot of self-development work, it probably does, where, you know, I was kind of here to heal a lot of the family's karma, even though my dad had done a lot on kind of like the 3D plane, I was still carrying a lot of like imprints and emotional issues that just kind of caught passed on to me. And so when I went through my Saturn return, you know, I had done, I was doing all the things that you would do, right? Like I had a boyfriend, I had a good job. I went to Ivy League school. I worked for BlackRock, which is the largest asset manager in the world. Like I was truly in those ways, right? Set up for success, but I was not spiritual. I was not awake. I was literally just kind of on autopilot doing the things, you know, that I honestly wanted to do at that time. But when I look back that I was sort of set up to do, and I always had this feeling inside of me that it was like, I always felt this void, like something was missing, but because I was so unexposed to accessing my desires or really even, I didn't know what trauma was. Like I just wasn't turned on to this world at all. I didn't know what it was and I kind of just ignored it. And then eventually what happens, I used to live in San Francisco during that part of my life is like, I kept getting this call to move to Los Angeles. And I had no idea why I had been in LA before I had never wanted to move to LA. And you know, we all have those moments in life where we just get a pull and like we, something has to happen. And also the universe was just kind of pushing me out of San Francisco. Just things were getting like very difficult and complicated and yada, yada. So ultimately I just decided I was going to move to LA. I was going to quit my job, move to LA. I had no plan. I had started dating someone who was there, but he had really nothing to do with it. Like I wasn't, that wasn't serious, but I was just spending more time there partially because of that. And then I moved to LA and this was during my Saturn return. So for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's kind of when you're between the ages of like 29 and 31 and literally, and it tends to be like a very big wake up call in life and a call forward into, you know, more of who we really are. And immediately like my whole life fell apart. It was, it was literally almost like it was practically overnight. I got involved. Is this this when the money story went absolute sideways? Uh, Yeah. I mean, we went from like, doing everything right. I had my retirement account, cash right. saved, fully invested, no debt, never had a dollar debt in my life. I mean, I was doing everything you're supposed to do. I worked in finance. I knew what I was supposed to be doing and I was doing it. But all of my trauma just like hit all at once. I had a really intense psychic awakening. And that's one thing when you're already spiritual and you're looking for that. But I wasn't looking for that. I thought I was losing my mind. 
I was like hearing voices, having premonition dreams about this guy that I became obsessed with that I had like a five year situation ship with dreaming about things he was going to do before he did them for years. Like it was just, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I started outsourcing my power a lot. I basically developed like a psychic addiction because I was like so obsessed with him. And I basically wound up burning through all my money and I had had no experience with that. And in a way, because things had been so easy for me financially, I almost, it's like, it's like, I couldn't see that the floor was falling out from under me. And even though I kind of knew I was very codependent, my anxiety was like at a 10. It was almost like I was functioning, you know, how like addicts do things where someone who's not in that state would go like, why in the world would you do that? It makes it, right, but make it totally sense. makes sense from their perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're just, your brain goes in a such intense, like survive, not survival mode of like, oh, things have to go well for me. It was just like, you're just trying to like get something that's so outside of you and it's not working. You're just stuck on a loop. It was almost like I was doing that, but I wasn't addicted to any particular substance. And so, yeah, I mean, I just completely financially destroyed myself and that was later followed by in that kind of like five years I was in LA, a pretty big health crisis. And I had fibroids. I had to have surgery. I had to, I finally did get a, a job, but it was still nowhere near. I was paycheck to paycheck, like barely yeah. hanging on, not like what I was, where I was at in finance. And at one point I had like three part-time jobs. Like it was literally as though I was just starting over completely in life is what happened. And then I had this health crisis. I had fibroids. I and I had to have surgery and I had to leave my job. And that was a real like come to Jesus moment for me because having your health on the line in that kind of way where I couldn't move off the sofa for months, you know, you're like, what's going on with my life? What also, is Also, I just it? want to interject because, and you may or may not know this part of my story, but my first book, The Paleothyroid Solution, when you have hypothyroidism, you often get female issues that manifest itself gynecologically. So people get, you know, fibroid cysts, right? All this kind of stuff. I also had that issue and then had to have one of them surgically removed. And I will just say, and this is why I want to interject, having female stuff is the worst. The it is the most worst. demoralizing fucking thing ever for any woman out there. I, to this day, sometimes I'm so grateful for my gynecological health. I got past it. I solved my hypothyroidism. Yay. Uh, best-selling book. Fuck yeah. Lemonade out of lemons. But I have moments where I literally, I think about those moments during that struggle. And I am just crying for all the women out there who are struggling. If you're out there, we get you, we see you and don't worry, there's a way. Um, but I just wanted to interject and say that because that is the worst health thing for us. Like, you know what I mean? It's really, oof, that's rough. I've been there. But it feels like it's like taking away your womanhood in a way that you didn't even know that could be taken away. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Until it happens. And I was bleeding and they're trying to get me to stop bleeding. I was bleeding so much from the fibroids to even have the surgery that went on for two months where I was literally just completely bleeding out. Yep. I had 37 fibroids. Two of them were the size of grapefruits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel for was, you. I'm glad, I'm glad you're so open to share that because I know you're on the other side of that uh, struggle, but you know, and I think at least I'm sure you feel the same way when you've gotten hit with something like that in a contrast, uh, it makes regular non-sick life so great. Like you're that much more grateful. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't even know to even consider a life where my health wasn't just standard and, you know, normal, meaning no real issues. It never happened to me before. It was very humbling. <laughs> so I agree with you, but it woke me up. And I found Louise Hay and I looked up the spiritual reason for fibroids and it was romantic shame. And that made perfect sense for how I'd been living and operating in romantic relationships. And I just truly started on my healing journey. That's honestly what really woke me up. I wanted to move to New York. I was like, I'm not getting another job in LA. I'm sure manifested the money to move to New York. And then, you know, there was a couple of years I got a job in New York. That was, we were getting there, but I really wanted to. And again, we're still paycheck to paycheck, you know? So I just wanted more. And I always knew that I wanted to help people. I remember when I took that last job, sitting down on my sofa and being like, this is the last job I'm ever going to take. But I had no idea what I wanted to do. It was just, I always feel like we received the energy before we received kind of that 
like before it all rolls out in front of us, before it's clear, you just keep feeling pulls, you know, I don't know if that's happened to you, but you don't really know like what to do with it. Yeah. So I had that. And then ultimately, you know, I started expanding a little bit into coaching. So I was hired. My friend reached out to me to do business consulting for her company. And I had 15 years of sales and marketing experience before what I do now. And they were just, they wanted help with something that I, which was like in retail, I used to be a buyer. They were wanting to do things that I had done before and done well. I'm like, oh sure, that's easy. I can do that. And then I flew out and I remember I got paid for a few hours of work, my full rent in New York. And I was like, what am I doing? (laughs) That was the easiest money of all time. They were grateful. I was just sharing what I already know. And that money is a lot faster than what I'm making in my job. And I had really started on more of a manifestation journey as well. And I just, and I was featured on a podcast that more on my personal, it was expanded Lacey Phillips podcast on my personal journey with manifestation inside of other areas of my life. And, you know, people were so moved by my story and I just took that, you know, I was like, oh, okay, if people are moved by my story, I've created, I didn't realize that I was like, I've still talk about, you know, lemonade out of lemons. I've created so much in my life that I didn't even realize, well, I can help people. And yeah. then I just started and I moved into coaching, like literally through social media and is, was the best decision that I've ever made in my life is obviously here we are today. Oh, and so during that financial destruction, because I used all the money in my investment accounts. And I didn't put enough aside, which I knew to do. But again, my brain was like on another planet. So I acquired almost six figures in tax debt. So I had Mm -hmm. the extreme anxiety of that on top of me with, you know, just everything else I was going through. And then I basically went from, you know, nearly six figures in tax debt to my first six figure month, six figure revenue month. And my business was in the second year. Fuck yeah, girl. And just let's, uh, celebrate that. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. It is fantastic. And it also just shows you what's possible. Cause I remember when that felt like such a big mountain and I hate to see people feel like they're collapsing under their debt and like they can't resource themselves because I really still made investments in myself and my growth, even with that debt. And I'm so glad I did because otherwise I would never be here now. Yes. And I, and it's like, I have a similar story to you in terms of that, like, you know, high corporate killing it, then drop down and then, you know, back up. Right. And so I guess what I would say is let me just play devil's advocate for someone who might be listening. And they're like, okay, it sounds easier for you, easier for you to have gotten into this energy. Once you learn what you learned, because you had the backdrop of understanding what money was like to have in the first place, Jocelyn. So what about me out there? I have never experienced what it's like. Yeah, but I hadn't made it myself. <laughs> it's a big difference to, have made money in the corporate world versus to do it through your own business. I've met a lot of women who make a lot of money in the corporate world who are terrified to do it inside their own business. I think that's a kind of a, you know what? They're very, it's different. It's a diff, like you making money in the corporate world does not require the same level of like showing up, being seen, sharing your full truth, taking up the whole stage. I mean, there's, Sure. It's a, it's a totally different ball game. You can be, if you're just someone who gets their shit done and follows direction well, and is like, can lead meetings and get people from point A to point B, you can fly in the corporate world. That's not enough to ha- be, have a thriving business. You know, you, w- w- after you went through your, you know, dark period here of just being a disaster and then came out the other side, um, I'm sure in hindsight, you were looking at the, obviously the ways you were acting towards money and congruent with how you knew to and, and knew and had experience with and all of that stuff. How did you, what, what do you see in people that you coach and that are out there? What are these stumbling blocks of declared opinions about money or thoughts? I mean, we know it's that uh, it always starts with like, I don't think it's possible for me. That's one. What are some ones you've heard that you're like, whoa, that's, that's new. I mean, you know, not the money grows on trees, but anything that surprised you where, you know, people are coming from a baseline of, of de- declarations about money and beliefs that are just holding them back. I feel that people mostly feel the same things about money in varying degrees. I've never heard anything shocking. It's like all things that we were right, most, people, <laughs> most people's families program with them with or society program them with, you know, so the whole thing of like, 
Oh, well, well, just what you said to me. Oh, you grew up around money. So shouldn't it be straightforward for you? Well, then what happened? Why do we know all these trust fund babies who can never get their life together? That's right. It's not about that, you know? Um, so, oh, I didn't come from this kind of environment, right? So how, but if you also think about most, we, there's so many people on this planet who we all know who have total rags to riches stories. A lot of the people, I mean, I grew up with a father who is complete rags to riches story because those people, it's like, in one way, let yourself be empowered through the struggle that you have gone through. Cause what I've seen with people like that is they know what it's like. And they're like, I am never, ever, ever, ever going to live that way again. Yes. And it's that contrast that you had, that I had, that I think is helpful in these moments, even with health, appreciating health. You probably appreciate it so much more now that you've been through that struggle. And I feel like I had that same sense. And Yeah. Trust fund baby. So, you know, my father and my stepmother as well, uh, he's no longer with us. Absolute examples of that had everything at their fingertips, the best education, all of the makings of, and even here's money to start out in life. Like, you know, like all the stuff and became absolute. Yeah. Down the dumps, zero broke ass motherfuckers. Just absolutely has nothing to do with what you're raised with. I think you have even more of a shot almost (laughs) if you can get your mindset, if you've been someone who has struggled because you know what it's like down there. You don't want to be there. You want something different versus the other. You know, I think it's good contrast. If, like you said, people use it to their advantage. How can we start to use that to your advantage? People are down on money. Don't think it can be there for them. Uh, what do you say to start to ignite people into this uh, starting to believe in oneself? Well, I feel like, you know, I always say it's interesting inside of money and I teach deeply inside wealth energetics, what it ultimately comes down to, right? And where I see women receive the most wealth and where I, you know, even watching my own journey, it's really like this energy of money is drawn to power. And I don't mean power in the sense of how we see it on the world stage where we see what's, you know, what politicians do, celebrities, yada, yada, that we don't like. And also this is a big one side note. You have to stop associating money with how people move in the world where you don't like how they move them moving in the world the way they do has nothing to do with money. We do have a society that very much focuses on money. So you know about these people because they have a lot of money, but they were going to behave poorly anyway. There are people with no money who have terrible morals. You know, it's not the money. Money's just making you have, you have more resources to go out and act like how you want to act, you know? But it's not about money. That's really, yeah, that is absolutely, it's absolutely true. And so I, what I feel like the first thing that we have to allow ourselves to do is like get in touch with what we actually want. So many people are like asleep at the wheel when it comes to creating their life, right? They're operating off of what their parents had, what their neighbors had, what's right in front of their face and not allowing themselves to not just live in response to what's around you, but to go like, okay, from the truth of my soul, if sky's the limit, there are no rules, right? If time and time's not really nice, but if time didn't exist, right? I didn't have this particular set of circumstances that I've decided I need to create a story around. Like if I just tune into what do I want? What is that? Right? Like I had to tune into, well, I want to help people. That's all I knew. I didn't know what else to do with it, but I could I find I got to a place where I could say that to myself. Right. And the universe really hears that. And I just had that floating in the background and told the, and then the doors opened and I took the actions and I took the steps to make that possible. But before any of that, there's a declaration to self. The universe is not giving you things. You don't even know if you can't, especially big things, if you can't say what they are. Mm. And a lot of women especially do not allow themselves to lead with just what do I want, (laughs) you know? And I think you really have to start there. And then I've noticed when we set power, and obviously there's so many ways to go deep and like healing your trauma and healing the energetic imprints that that leaves and, you know, things we go deeper into in my work. But at the base level, it's like, what do you want? And start really anchoring into the energy of that and start putting yourself in those, like in the environment. So let's say, you know, a lot of times people want, they want more money. They want to be able to travel more. They want to stay nicer hotels, like whatever it is, you have to like slowly allow yourself to even have more. It's like, instead of, I don't know, staying in the three-star hotel, because that's what you'd usually do. Go stay in a four-star hotel once, see how it feels, you know, like 
go, even if you can't afford the, I don't know, the most to have dinner, at the most beautiful restaurant, go have tea there. Like you have to start exposing yourself to more wealth. You know, I did it the other day. You have to start to normalize it. Yeah, I did it the other day for a friend who uh, has a bad old car story going on, you know, (laughs) and uh, I know what that's like from back in the day, you know, and I have a new new car and she came over and we had uh, gone and done some things. And then I said, hey, you know what? Do you want to do you want to like maybe LOA new car vibes and drive my car around? Because I also live in the middle of the mountains with amazing roads that are like filmed. They film car commercials here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, And she was like. Yeah. Yeah. And we went for a drive and I had so much fun with her and the feelings you could just the vibe from her right in 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 my driver's seat, you know, was just and I was just like, and that's what you're talking about. Go test drive a car, go sit and go look inside of one, go to the hotel and have a cup of coffee if you can't afford a room, like go and experience the vibe of what it is that you're wanting to be around. And so, uh, yeah, I just did that the other day. Cause it was something that I was like, Oh no, that I, I know what that's like. And it would feel real right, nice right now to drive a new car. So let me just give her my keys. And I love that because I remember my dad would tell stories around, he would drive around the neighborhood I grew up in in his Volkswagen bug. And my mom would be like, seriously, are we going there again? <laughs> No, but ultimately he, when he had no money and ultimately he bought a house, Yeah, you know, there's also a lot of obvious like action and dedication inside of that. But it's like, if you don't normalize having more, how are you going to have it? When more feels like such a big deal, it's almost like too big of a deal to receive it. Good. You know, and I, I talk about this at different income levels too. Like the money I make now, I actually don't think it's a lot of money. I know to a lot of people it is, I'm not coming from with that at that from a place of self-criticism, but I'm like, there are people in the world who literally could not live off a hundred thousand dollars a month <laughs> because of the level of which they're living their life. Oh, I know there- many people who could never survive. Never. No. So I'm like, so this is change. So this is change. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> what's possible, but I don't feel bad inside of it. I let it be a point of excitement because wealth is so infinite. Yeah. And it is just sort if of that like, makes sense. Yeah. It's the belief of like each level that you get to. And then you look back, oh, that's funny. I thought that was a lot or, you know what I mean? And then you just move forward. What I like about, uh, what I love about your Instagram and what you're putting out there and what you know, and what you exude, which is a very important component to manifesting anything, but particularly money or being a successful entrepreneur, which is confidence. And you've had posts on, you know, talking about people pleasing and some other things, you know, manifesting money has so it's not just that. And those little things we're talking about, it's really who you are as a person and you're showing up in the world. And the more Mm -hmm. confidence you have, the more likely you are to succeed at this. Well, and that's where I was going when I said money's attracted to power, right? Yes, it is. And so inside of this journey, what happens is we go like, Oh, I want a business. I just want to make more money. And then when you look back, you're like, Oh, I've really been increasing my personal power this whole way through. And that's why what once felt like a dream is now easy, standard, obvious. And there's a whole new dream because my, the level of power I carry or frequency I carry is actually aligned with what I want instead of feeling like kind of lower than or insignificant to what I desire, you know, and we build that over time. And then like you're saying, there's the energies that we look at directly boundaries, boundaries and money go Mm -hmm. hand in hand. I always say, have you ever met? A, a self-made wealthy person who doesn't have impeccable boundaries. Uh, no, I have not. I literally have not. Right. However, right. A lot of women, especially there's, we grew up with a lot of like, it's, it's just like the people pleasing need to make sure everybody's comfortable, the over mothering, like all of those things, right. Where you're, you know, you almost think you're arrogant or you're a bitch. If you just have boundaries and are confident, like that's not true. I've met very few women who I think need to be more humble. <laughs> like it's ridiculous, you know? Oh, I, women- yeah, I mean, yeah, you're singing my songs right now. Absolutely on board with that. And also too, uh, let's look at the opposite of, you know, that, or which would be like the people, pleasing shy away this quote unquote yeah. humbleness this false humility and what that is is it's just being an inauthentic liar you're not being who you are and you're just sort of like creating covert contracts and passive aggressive shit in the world um and that's never gonna help anyone get anywhere no matter with what you want to manifest 
Not at all. And so we really have to clean that up. It's like the people pleasing it's boundaries. Speaking your truth comes up a lot for people. I mean, obviously inside a powerful business, you need to powerfully be able to speak your truth. Well, guess where you start doing that first in your everyday life, life and business go hand in hand. They are not separate building a successful business. Yes. There's the business things. And it's also wildly a personal development journey mm-hmm. and that, that is ends what- up reflecting in your business. Yeah. And you've, you know, you lived in LA. I currently live here and, and, and I am in the entertainment industry still uh, on the side as a writer and, and still jump into it every now and then. And what, I mean, the one thing I've seen over the years is people I know have been successful at it because they had a business mind and a success in business prior to that. And they treated it like that. Um, mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's show and business. It's not just the great part. It's show and business. Like, it's a fucking, <laughs> yeah. The other side of that is the business part. And that's the part that a lot of people didn't get where they did, you know, they could have been some, right. But they didn't get that part. Right. And the people who might've been even less talented, who got the business part sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe they had a little less talent, but they were good enough. Uh, they get for further ahead. Uh, Oh yeah. I mean, I've, you know, uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of really interesting examples of that. And I think that that's why I was able to get the roles and things that I was able to, because again, I persevered and treated it like a business, you know? Um, and uh, to some degree, you know, I'm thinking you you just got to go do that. I persevered. I went out there, you know, and I was like, Oh, maybe I'll just like, why don't I just offer to a casting office to like work for free one day a week? Like, let me get on the inside of these people that can hire me. Let me see. I'll right. let me get into the background of the people that are responsible for m- choosing whether or not I even have a shot. Let me go see what the fuck they're doing and offer some help. Maybe get in there. <laughs> and then and, you can see how these people tick. So you know what angle to play. That's right. And it brought amazing benefits. And then they are likely to go, you know what? We need a reader for a session today. You know, not anymore. Things are like remote and, you know, on Zoom. But for mm-hmm. the most part. And so, you know, I got to read with some of my favorite actors. I mean, I'm in rooms with, you know, and, and then they trust you and they go, oh, she's good. And then they start sending out for auditions. And so, you know, I didn't have an agent. OK, there's um, it's almost impossible in this town to do that. But again, that entrepreneurial spirit or that business spirit is why I think I even had any of the success I've had is just because of that element. So you have to have both. But then on your side of things and what you teach, and this is why I like that you're teaching this inner stuff as woo people might be uncomfortable with that out there is not a joke. You know, um, it's not a joke. And I teach business strategy too, because it's so important to your point. I cannot tell you how much time I spend telling people to stop making their business about them. Your business is not supposed to be a response to your insecurities, right? Like you showing up is not based on like, are you insecure or not today? It's not about you, right? Treat it like a business, put on your CEO hat. Like you will have a way and it's not to self-abandon right? We take care of ourselves. We do what we need to do, but we treat the business like a business. And that is how you're as an enormous piece also of how you're going to have a successful business instead of, cause you know how you've probably seen this, like when we're making the business about our insecurities, right? We're undercharging. We're not speaking our truth. We're not telling the truth. We're in people pleasing. Like we have our personal issues and our business so wound up it's almost like we have a codependent relationship with the business instead of putting on the CEO hat and going like, okay, I'm running a business. This is like a sovereign entity. Yes. It channeled through me, but it is still a business. What needs, what does the business need today? Go do that. Right. And you get to get support for anything else that's coming up for you from your coach, wherever. This is why we teach both. You know, it's so, I just love what you're saying and that even it applies in the entertainment industry because it's true. If you want to have a successful business, you need to also run one. Yep. Absolutely. Like, like a business. Well, and also too, I mean, here's the thing, like, um, movie sets and, and TV sets are some of the most well-oiled damn situations you've ever seen in your life. Okay. It's like, you get on set as an actor, there's like a representative from the union there to make sure everything's okay for you. There's someone, there's someone carrying your shoes There's someone, everyone's got a fucking job. It is, it is, it's impressive. It's really impressive because wow. it's a solid, efficient business. There's money on the line. Time is money. It is like no joke. Cause the business back end of that is serious. So when the actors show up and they're drunk or they don't show up to set and you hear all, you know what I mean? And I remember even, uh, casting directors would let me in on phone calls. They'd call me to their office. They'd be like, hey, hold on, sit and listen to this one. They put on speaker and it'd be them arguing with an agent over like some actor on a show. And I remember there was one actor and they're like, no, they're like, no, we're not going to cast him. The guy does blow every time and like never shows up. And it's always a disaster. 
Anyway, they pushed them into it. And guess what happened on the set? He had to be replaced because it didn't blow. <laughs> I mean, it was like, and so again, if you can't be professional, I mean, forget drugs. I'm just talking late, whatever, <laughs> you hold up crew, you know, that is not how businesses operate successfully. So that's where those, you know, people just uh, lose it, you know? And it's so interesting because I always give this Hollywood example. I love it around. So there's the business part, like we're talking about so important. And also a lot of why I was able to put in place smart business strategy and help other people do it so quickly is I did it for 15 years professionally before this, just in other types of businesses, but it's largely a very similar skill set, you know, on that side of it. But anyhow, I love this Hollywood example because what happens too, right? When we don't do the inner work and we don't learn how to expand our capacity to hold more is people get a lot and then they fully sabotage. This is why so many celebrities like become famous overnight. And all of a sudden there's addiction chaos, right? We ha- we've heard all these stories of lottery winners, $2 million in the bank, no money the next year. And everyone's like, what happened? Capacity. They can't hold it. You actually have to do that inner energetic work, trauma release, you know, holding more nervous system work, et cetera, et cetera, so that you don't blow your system out. You know, I, I've had, I've I've probably mentioned it a couple of times because it is astounding to me, but this is where money trauma, I think is the most amazing. Um, I know a family, the, the, you know, the, the elders in the family, like two 90 year old brothers, practically. Okay. Uh, worth, I don't know, 40 million each never enjoyed a day in their life, never bought anything, never went anywhere, live in squalor, uh, flies, disgusting, like multi-million dollar apartments, have properties sitting on the Hollywood Hills. No one's ever touched worth 20 million. Just uh, being sued, uh, uh, all sorts of issues because control freaks, because they have trauma from not having any money coming from another country. And they have this abusive background that made them gaslight in place. So, you know, then they'd hire people for cheap or the wrong people and the people would embezzle and always like, all, all sorts of trauma. And, and, and for what it was all to pursue the making of money, but yet they never once they're 90, they still have never fucking enjoyed. A They've day never day. had actual wealth, wealth never is had actual money wealth. in the bank. And then it's, yes. what do you, how do you live? Yes. And you I know? saw the sun starting to act like that. We were going through that sort of discussion. I said, Hey, I'm noticing that you're actually starting to do some of the same things. <laughs> yeah. I love that you said that. What you know, you I'm like, you got to be careful there. You, cause, cause I saw that he was in the pursuit always of it, but was not enjoying the fruits and it was always about the next thing. And so, yes, uh, I point that out to them occasionally when I feel like it comes up, they absolutely recognize that and realize that is generations of trauma and has received tons of therapy and have done the work, you know, like, you like people listening should do if this is a, if this is a sore spot in your life. And the thing is we all, it's so interesting. It's like, you can't run away from your trauma. It will literally, no matter how much money you have, don't have whatever it will run the show. Oh yeah. It'll find a way to run the show. It just shows up differently for all of us. So it's really worth addressing. And you might think, Oh, I had a perfect childhood. Trust me. You did it. (laughs) Like even the people whose parents stayed together, treated them pretty well, et cetera. Like we, there could be things that were just happening on a smaller level. It could literally be that your dad worked a lot and you don't feel good enough, right? Like Mm -hmm. it can be, it can be capital T trauma and it can be smaller things. And so it is so worthwhile to go down that road. And it's interesting is when people come to me, they end up going down the road through the context of business and money, but we always still go down the road. And I've seen people escalate to luxury coaching levels of income, and then yet still have a struggle of trying to bridge that divide between old thoughts about the struggle with money. And now that they are successful, like once they've, you know, done your program, worked with you, like, or, and gotten beyond that point, I'm sure you might've seen a little bit of that where they might still be acting in ways that are sort of of that old mindset. I had to point that out to a fellow coach friend of mine in one capacity. I was like, Hey, wait, uh, I think you got an old money mindset moves going on here right now. Like a feel. What was the situation? And she was like, she was like, all oh, right. It was a couple of situations with spending money on things and being like way too crazy frugal about something that, you know, one of it was a, uh, a business flight on a long flight. Um, and 
I said, you know, it, it, and the money, the upgrade was nothing. It was only a thousand dollars this person. And it was a, a sort of a thing. They hadn't taken the trip in a long time. And I said, what are you, what are you doing? Like you're thinking about it. You want to, but you're trying to sort of nickel and dime yourself out of it. And this is like, I, you know, we went through the fire. I was like, this is like a blip in what you have. This is really a blip. You have to, you want it. This is when you make things easier for yourself. These are the moments that you adopt this luxury feeling yourself and embrace that, you know, and she, your life. She, she did yeah. it and she did it. Yeah. And there's just a few small things like that. And again, to people out there, they might be like, Oh my God, a thousand dollars for an upgrade for business class. But actually the, the ticket probably would have been, you know, 15,000 based on where she was going. So, and in the grand scheme of, again, her finances, yes. If you only have a thousand dollars in the bank, maybe that's not do that. <laughs> unless you have yeah. a lot of faith, but like, you know, don't do that. So I think sometimes too, as we get more successful, we can still have these little, like you said, little traumatic things. Cause you didn't ever really address it. Mine came up. So, and also a lot of times they come up as we're moving through and that's how we know they're there. So for me, right. I was always really good at investing in myself. I knew to be successful in coaching. I I was never one of those people who tries to dip in and out of investments, not be coached, but have a successful coaching business. I did not play any of those games. I was like, I need, I know I need help. I'm getting it now. And so I was always very like, okay, well, we're just going to do what it takes on investing in myself in the business. And that way, but I started to get very more fearful, like what you're saying around just investing in pure pleasure, which is so interesting because I'm a woman who loves luxury. My Venus is in Taurus. Like that's how I like to live my life. But I had so much fear because I had financially destroyed myself before. I It was almost like, am I that woman or this woman? I was like, am I accidentally doing something I did before and not realizing, right? There was that kind of like gap in self-trust. And so I had to consciously be like, nope, I'm going on vacation. I'm staying in this nice hotel. I am only flying first class, right? Like I had to just continuously increase my standards, not just for how I invest in the business, but for how I live my life to enjoy my life. And then honestly, like more money just started coming in because, you know, we can't, we don't, it's like trying to have abundance in one area and not allowing abundance everywhere is very sticky, right? We want this like yummy figure eight energy around our whole life, our business, et cetera. So, and I knew this, right. But I had to consciously make the choice to go put money in other places as well. And, you know, in my life, in addition to my business and I love my life, you know, but I remember having to make that choice. I feel like the people who have the toughest problem with this are the people. So I've noticed there are some people that they really want to see money equal something they can tangibly see, like redoing a bathroom, buying a painting, whatever, just something material, tangible. There's that thing that I have my, my money equals my money, right? Even could be clothes, yeah. whatever. And then there's people who I'm more of this type of person who I would rather have the experience of a vacation like that, because here's the thing. I've seen people also walk by that $20,000 bathroom. It makes them happy for a couple of weeks and then it doesn't make them happy. But guess what? Vacations I've taken in my life still make me happy to this fucking day. <laughs> right now, still enjoying literally crying tears of joy over the gratitude of that experience and loving every minute of it. I just, and again, so I think that the people who have to see something material have a little bit harder time in the, like we're talking about enjoying self like for them or luxury in some way that's an experience and but isn't that the point of having money wealth so you can have time to enjoy so if you're not trying to move into that every now and then then you're going to get there and you're going to be miserable pacing around going all right i'm just going to keep doing stuff because i can't enjoy anything and you're going to be like yeah because that's 90 just... year old brothers i just told you about <laughs> you know? literally and it's so funny you say that because you're reminding me of the people i call this like the middle class money mindset who try to save their way into wealth. So, right. They're like, I'm here for the American dream. My only agenda in life is to go buy this house, right? I'm going to suffer for years to save, not I'm going to create overflow and just buy the house as a natural extension of how much money I have, but I'm just going to, you know, not, I'm going to save every single penny. I'm not going to do anything enjoyable. And then in my buy the house. Okay, fine. You are able to buy the house. Then what? what are you going to do that again to buy the next thing? You know what I mean? Like you're still not actually happy. Like I'm so down for have the luxurious house, whatever you want, but it's like the energy that like what you're saying, it's like the energy that you carry to get the place that you desire is going to be how you feel when you have it. So if you're miserable getting to arrival, you'll be miserable in the having. 
Absolutely. I want to hear, you know, I know there's so many, but it's always so fun when we hear about 180 degree turn stories where people were like, oh, I'm at, I'm at the bottom. There's no way, or who really were skeptical and embraced it and just jumped in and yeah. you know, right. So I would love to hear some of those that come to mind um, for you that like are special. clients you mean? Yeah. Clients or other people, you know, just, you know, stories in life that, uh, that yeah. Oh my gosh. I've seen it so many times. Let's see. I mean, I have a client now. She was one of my first clients in my business and she's worked with me in a variety of capacities, like private or in my programs, whatever it is. And she, at the time, it was so interesting because she came to me. She didn't even know she wanted a business. She was just like, I don't know what my deal is. I know I'm supposed to work with you and I'm not happy, you know? And she was like, numbing through drinking. I mean, she wasn't an alcoholic, but you know, that classic, like drinking three glasses of wine of, or two glasses of wine every night, like where it's sort of just like, it's borderline. You're just floating through life, not doing a damn thing. Right? Yeah. But not the person who would like drink a vodka soda before they go to work, you know, <laughs> right. yeah. it's, it's, sort it's of a like, functional, it's a functional <laughs> level of yeah. a functional level of alcohol, but kind of numbing with alcohol, numbing with shopping, not having a good relationship with her husband, not being happy at work. I mean, I think she was making less than $3,000 a month in her job and she had a family. You know what I mean? It was just not working. Um, and she just got all her energy around making that initial investment with me. And, and I, and for me, it was really easy to see because it's actually interesting because she was just literally playing out her parents' life. She had the same job they had. Like she was literally on autopilot playing out her family story and going, why am I not happy? And I'm like, because this isn't you, this is not your soul's truth. You're literally just living based off of programming. And then as we got deeper into the work, she started to wake up to that. And it was really interesting because she had actually had a lot of um, certifications and different healing modalities, but she never used them. She didn't even know why she wanted them, right? Like she was just kind of doing it again when the energy is pulling you, you don't know why. And she figured out that she wanted to start a business. And then obviously like I was building my business and I helped her do that while I was building mine. And she so quickly, like months, months in, started making more money than she was making in her full-time job. And she did this because, you know, people tell stories like I have kids, whatever. She was married. She had kids and she had a full-time job and she still, she had no social media presence. There was no like special tricks working in her favor. (laughs) You know, this was like dedication and commitment and being coached and doing the work. And she quickly started out earning what she was earning in her full-time job income and now she's at 50K months in her business. Oh, I love that. And she quit her job maybe six months in. It was so fast. That's very fast. Look, I mean, if everyone's listening, like think about six months. Um, it can just it can just turn around so quickly. I've had two friends who kind of skeptics and they're dudes, but they still kind of adopt a little bit of law of attraction. Like, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll start kind of get on board a couple of times. Like, yeah. You're like jobs and stuff. Dip a little bit. <laughs> yeah. They dabble yeah. in there a bit. And it's funny because when they dabble, it works and you're like, dude, did Obviously. you know? okay. Yeah, of course. And so, uh, they just had like, so amazing. My, my, uh, one of my friends had a thought where he was like, okay, you know, I'm kind of tired of this corporate thing all these years. Like you're talking about, right. This, this autopilot. And, uh, he had gotten a job last year for a company that was sold and he knew that he'd get a chunk. He did. He got like half a million and that was great. And he was like, Ooh, hold on. Maybe we, maybe I should do this again. Right. That I like this. I like this, you know, extra on top of this corporate structure. And so he was like, what do I need though in the bank to really, and he calculated out wherever. And he was like, I would be totally happy at this point if I had an extra, like I just had 5 million after like $5 million in the bank. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, for whatever she was like, if I had just 5 million, like post taxes, like extra on top of what I have like that, I'm good. Quit the job, do my life. And I was like, all right, cool. And not, I mean, two days later, a recruiter called him out of nowhere with a job with a company that was planning on going public now and sold. And again, maybe it wouldn't be for two years, maybe, but my friend on the phone said, well, listen, in order for me to leave, it would have to be like a huge equity situation. And the recruiter said, oh, oh, it's a huge equity package that would total somewhere between five and 10 million. (laughs) Of course. Like, I love it. And then I had another friend who, again, skeptic, but 
wrote down when they were going from 55,000 a year, wrote down 88,000. They want to go to 88. They got a job and they just said, oh, I just kept writing it on a piece of paper. I go, that's funny. What told you to do that? That's a weird thing to do. That's weird. <laughs> Why would anyone do, do that? About that sounds real me. fucking hippie, man. That sounds yeah. Crazy. Kept writing it down, got a job for literally, it was like 90. Then now years later, I said, okay, what's your new number on this new job? He's like 138. I go, all right, write it down. Motherfucker, you did it last time. Don't deny it. Who cares if it's even anything? And what do you think he got an offer for? <laughs> Again, well, haven't you heard Jim Carrey's story about how writing himself a check for 10 million? Yes, and in then his car. I, yeah, I think it was Dumber and Dumber that paid him 10 million. Yeah, I think he wrote it when he was like, in his car in LA or something. And he's like, just, he wrote that. Yeah, I love that. So again, it's funny. So even if it's that, even if it's something where you're like, all right, all the other stuff's too hippity, but you know, start thinking about numbers, start thinking about what you like next. Just write that down every day. I mean, it can, you can be small like that and dip your toe in as a skeptical person even, and still kind of see, you know, cause it's working whether you like it or not, but um it's an interesting imprinting. And I've seen a couple of really great recent stories with people who, again, just having faith or just putting that out there, just doing, even doing the mental work to go, what would I need to just be? Yeah. Ready? It's like, like allowing yourself alone. to go there. Yeah. Curiosity. I mean, I manifested the money to move to New York and this was well before I was like a manifestation money business coach. I wouldn't say, but I wasn't able to kind of carry the same level of wealth that I carry now, but I could get my arms around, like getting myself relocated in, in a space that I really wanted to be in right now. I'm just far the deeper in it. You go, the better results you're going to have, you know, but that is absolutely the place to start. Tell us. How can we work with you and benefit from you? I know you've got some free masterclass stuff too. People can jump in on, which is really great. Um, yeah. Tell us all the ways we can benefit from your energy on money. Oh, thank you so much. Also, I have a podcast. If you're a podcaster, which I'm assuming you, you are, if you're listening to this, it's called Queen Flow. Um, you can check out my website, jocelynkellyreed.com. There is a freebie on my site as well as on my Instagram link in bio. And it was around how I quantum leaped to my first 50K month in business in my first year in. So that's really powerful. There's so many programs. You know, I'm obviously happy to answer any questions you have if you take a look at my site. And a, a great place to start is truly the podcast. That's amazing. And then, yeah, so also your Instagram is great. Uh, is there Thank a website you. we can all visit? We'll put everything in the show notes to connect with you, but um, give us your website. Absolutely. So my website is jocelynkellyreed.com and my Instagram handle is jocelyn.kelly.read. Great. Uh, what last bit of advice would you like to leave with our audience before we wrap it up? Just go for gold. I see so yeah. many people who won't. I'm like, just go for it. I don't care where you came from, where you started. This could be your last life on the planet. You know, we don't know. Some of us believe in, it, in reincarnation. Some don't even with reincarnation. You could be on your last rodeo. So it's like, if you're <laughs> going to be here, make it big. Like everyone you see shining so bright, making so much money with all this fame, notoriety, whatever these things are that you desire, they all like, you know, every coach, all of us, like we all had an, a certain number of Instagram followers at one point, right? We're making a certain amount of money at one point. It's just like the only people that I see not succeed are the people who do not keep going. It is literally that simple. Perseverance. Well, per, it sounds simple. But you have to bring it to your everyday life. Like, just don't stop and you will get there. Great. And get help. Yes. Don't suffer through things. No need to be a martyr. You know, it goes That's a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Get some help. That's one of the things people, it's a really tough thing to ask for help, um, but do it. Thank you so much for joining us. Love this conversation. And for everyone else, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Al. Hey listeners, you know, over the years, a ton of companies have approached me to collaborate, but I will only promote companies whose products I believe in and that I actually use and consume on a regular basis. So let me tell you about some of my favorite companies that I can offer you discounts for. Rep Provisions, an amazing company doing incredible things for our planet, topsoil, and animals with regenerative agriculture. And it's my number one source for quality pasture-raised meat and chicken. Visit repprovisions.com and use code L15 for 15% off. I'm also obsessed with a company called Carnivore Crisps. They make a lean, all-natural, and delicious alternative to conventional snacking made with just real meat and real salt totally addictive and my favorite ones are the beef brisket and the ribeye visit carnivorecrisps.com and use code paleo10 
for 10% off. I also love and regularly use Paleo Valley products. They make amazing supplements and delicious paleo products. I use the superfood greens powder, grass-fed beef sticks, the organ complex, and their bone broth bars. I love the lemon and apple. I also use their essential C complex and more. Visit paleovalley.com forward slash promos forward slash L Russ for 15% off. I also love Primal Kitchen. They make delicious paleo-approved, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and no refined sugar products. And I use them daily, from their collagen powders and sauces and marinades to their avocado and olive oil. So good, so healthy. Visit PrimalKitchen.com and use code L10 for 10% off. I also love paleo powder and use it almost on everything I cook. They make incredible seasoning blends and they also have these incredible grain-free coatings that feel just like crispy breadings that you would have had prior to knowing that there's another way. So visit paleopowder.com and use code L15 for 15% off. 